Hello everyone. Uh, just want uh, to do a check, uh, quick check if you are able to hear me properly. And I'm also sharing my screen, so any one of you can just respond with, uh, you know, if you're able to see my screen and uh, you know, uh, hear me properly. So you can uh, type in your chat window, and I'll be able to receive your responses. Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah. So are we all set for the webinar? Let us get started now. Okay, so a brief introduction about me. So my name is Sanket. I have 10 plus years of experience in software testing. I have 8 plus years of experience in automation testing with different tools. And I have been mainly working with framework design and maintenance of different types of framework. So as you know that today's topic, it is designing automation framework with Selenium. So first of all, uh, we will begin with the background. Uh, what exactly is the need of automation? Once we know the need of automation, we are using tool Selenium for automation and uh, that's the one we are going to study and then we will move on to the frameworks. That what kind of frameworks are available as far as Selenium is concerned and how they are implemented. So I'll mainly concentrate on uh, you know, uh, getting 30 minutes or 40 minutes of theory and the rest of uh, the time for showing you the practical demo of how the frameworks they are implemented. Okay, so what are we going to learn today? At the end of the session, you'll be able to understand what is automation testing exactly. First of all, we should know what automation is, why exactly automation is used and everything. Then we'll learn about the Selenium Suite. So Selenium Suite, it comprises of four different components. That is Selenium ID, Selenium RC, Selenium WebDriver, and Selenium Grid. And then we will move on to an advanced level, which says us how to design a test framework. So we have two types of frameworks. Uh, that one is keyword driven, and the one is data driven. So the, uh, these two uh, frameworks, that is a keyword driven approach and data driven approach, when they are uh, used together, it is known as a hybrid framework. So we will also see what hybrid frameworks are and how they are exactly used. So I'll show you a live dem uh, demo of the hybrid framework also. Okay, so just uh, this is for your information. You can uh, ask me as many questions you uh, want. I'll try to answer depending upon the uh, depending upon how the time permits us. So you can type in in your uh, chat window, and I'll uh, be able to receive your questions. And uh, the other thing is, uh, you know, uh, there are uh, so many people. So there are a lot, uh, lots of uh, questions that uh, might be coming in. So uh, from my side, I'll, you know, try to answer as many as possible. So anyone facing this uh, difficulty with uh, the audio or video? Uh, I have few uh, participants who have uh, been saying there is some issue. So uh, rest, most of the people are fine. Uh, so I guess uh, people who are facing issue, you can check network connectivity on your side. Or else you can just uh, you know leave the webinar session and reconnect again if you are fa uh, still facing difficulties. Okay, so let us begin with the concept of manual testing. What is manual testing for any or any application that we have? Just a moment. So what is manual testing? Manual testing is nothing but for any applications we validate and verify that uh, the application it has been designed as per the specification and it is uh, all the function functional box of the uh, application they are working correctly. But you know most of the time it happens that you have to repeat the same set of tests again and again. Uh, that is uh, for example regression test. So regression test is something that you will be doing with each of your builds. Whenever there is a new build you will again execute uh, the regression test cases. Then there is data driven testing. That is when you test the same screens with different data. So that is also some form of tedious task both regression and data driven testing. So how if I ask any one of you to do a same set of tests thousand times. So it is but obvious that you guys will get bored. Okay, so how do we solve this problem? We need something that is going to, uh, you know, help us to get rid of this manual work again and again, again and again. 
So then came the concept of automation. What is automation? Whatever user interactions are there with uh, that, how the user interacts with the application, we try to record the user interaction and then we try to again perform the same set through the uh, same user interactions through code. So this is what exactly automation would roughly mean in normal English. So how do we do it? So there are different tools that will help you to automate your uh, automate your application. So depending upon what kind of application it is, what functions you want the automation code to uh, perform, depending on all these factors, we select a particular tool. So for us, we have selected Selenium WebDriver. So why Selenium? So first of all, Selenium is free source. Uh, sorry, free, uh, Selenium is open source. So it is free. You can do uh, just download the Selenium charts and get going with Selenium. The second thing is there is a lot of support that is available for Selenium. People have been, you know, trying different permutations and combinations uh, with Selenium. They are trying to integrate more and more tools, more and more frameworks been integrated with Selenium. So what happens is all this combination it uh, will definitely help you to even get uh, done, uh, get it done for your application. So that is the reason Selenium can be chosen. The first and foremost thing, Selenium can only be used with web applications. It cannot be used with Windows application. So anything that can run on any application that can run on your web browser, you can automate it using Selenium. So now what is automation testing? So automate, automated execution through scripts. Okay, as you can see, the, uh, now you write scripts, automation scripts, then you can execute the script n number of times. It is executed over a machine, so the machine, it never gets tired. You ask the machine to perform the same set of actions a thousand times, it will perform with same accuracy, same speed, and everything. And it is, uh, unlike human, it won't be tired, it won't have fatigue, it won't forget something to do. It will, be, it will go on and on till you stop the machine. Okay, so what next? Auto-generation of result file. So whenever the test execution has been completed, you can get the reports of your test execution into different formats. The formats can be, uh, you know, whatever you uh, desire. It can be a XML, it can be a HTML, it can be a Excel, so whatever you want. You can write the code in such a way that you get reports in particular format. Then taking screenshot and auto generation of report. So you can even take the screenshots of uh, the application while executing the test scripts. Why do we require test, uh, screenshots? The screenshots, they are proof that yes, such and such test, it has been executed at such and such time. And this is what uh, the user could have uh, probably seen on the screen if you, uh, a manual user would have executed the test script. So that is the reason we also try to get the screenshots. Okay. So once you have automated your test scripts, a tester's life, it becomes amazing. You don't have to do the same process again and again. And, uh, you know, with different sets of data, you can try on even few more ex uh, extra sets of data uh, along with whatever you are already trying manually. Why? Because it's not you who is executing. It's the machine who is executing now. Okay. Everything is handled by tool itself. Even execution flow is so fast. So execution of the test scripts, it will be definitely much, much, much faster than what a manual tester would have done. Okay. So let's have a look at our question uh, question window if we have any questions. Okay, so we have a few suggestions. Uh, one is that uh, can we have a question, hour, uh, question session for 10 minutes? Okay, we will definitely try. If we have time, we'll go, uh, go for 10 minutes of question session. Then uh, one of the questions from Sanjog is that uh, how hard it will be to learn Selenium for a manual tester with no coding knowledge? So I would definitely like to uh, answer this question, Sancho. So what happens is uh, there, there are a few set of int uh, instructions that uh, you will have to learn with Selenium. Uh, logic is definitely what is required, but that is something we have been always learning uh, from our grad schools uh, till uh, you know present day. So you can easily develop the logic. Uh, other thing is whatever you do manually, you have to uh, automate it. So 
you have a reference point. You can just uh, know what actions you perform manually and the same actions you can write it in the form of a code to be uh, executed by the machine. So you need to have a basic knowledge of whatever scripting language you are using with Selenium. So uh, Selenium supports Ruby, Python, Java, C Sharp. So whatever language is good for you, you can work with it. Okay. So uh, Sanjok, does that answer your question? And Manish too had the same question regarding the scripts. Okay. So let's proceed. Okay. So what are the advantages of automation testing? The first and foremost advantage is cost reduction. How does it reduce the cost? Once the scripts are developed, so you don't require 10 people sitting in executing the same uh, set of test cases on the application. A single machine can perform all the test cases that have been designed by the uh, automation testers and they can be executed across different platforms and different machines. Excuse me. Reusability. So once the code is written, you can use it on and on and on till the end of the application cycle. The script, it needs to be written once and it can be executed n number of times. There is no limit to as uh, how many number of times you can execute the same script. The third thing is it is fast. Yes, it is really fast. I'll sh when I show you the demo, you'll, uh, uh, you'll realize that whatever you would have done sitting manually in front of uh, the computer in 10 minutes, the automation script, it is capable of doing it in 30 to 40 seconds. So you can see what amount of time you can save with automation. The third thing is unattended execution. So by unattended execution, we mean that once you have started a run of a particular test suite on a machine or uh, on a particular platform, so you don't need to look into uh, the machine or you don't need to do any kind of interactions with the machine. The automation script will take care of each and everything. So whatever execution is there, it can be even lights off. What does that mean? Even if you are going home, you can just ask your computer to execute uh, so many test, case, test suites and send you a mail when everything is done. So it can be just like you leave from the office by starting your automation scripts and by the time you reach home or by the time you are just going to your bed, you can receive an email on, your, uh, on any of your devices, the mobile devices also, that yes, the execution has been completed, so many test cases were executed, so many passed, so many failed and everything. So this is what is beauty of automation, reliability. Now, if I ask a per person to do same uh, set of uh, test uh, steps again and again, so after some time, he will get bored with it. There will be fatigue and, you know, the accuracy, it won't be there. So uh, he might miss out some steps. He might not perform some actions. He might say, this is already working. Why should I do it again and again? So. Automation script does not do that. It doesn't get tired, it doesn't have fatigue, it doesn't get bored. So it will perform each and every step that you ask it to do. Okay. So, and it is very reliable. So whatever actions you have coded, those will be performed. You have a guarantee for that. And better quality. Why is the quality better? Because all these, uh, you know, human related uh, notions, they are not there. So the quality, it improves. And as the execution is very fast, whatever task you would have performed in two hours, your automation script will give you the results in 20 minutes. So this is what is altogether the beauty of automation. So any questions till this point with, relate, uh, with regards to automation? So we have a question from Balaji. As almost all frameworks serves the purpose of running the automated test in different style, how to select the various types of framework, page object model, hybrid framework, etc. for any project. So uh, Balaji, I guess till the end of the session, you will have an answer for this question. Uh, I guess we, are, uh, we should proceed with uh, our slides as of now because we haven't reached till the point of automation even at, uh, at this uh, time. Okay. So if this uh, question is unanswered by the end of the session, you can again ask me. Okay, so what is Selenium? Selenium is a suite of tools to automate web browsers across many platforms. So it, ha it is a suite. That means it is a combination of a uh, few uh, libraries. It is a combination of, uh, you know, some intra uh, 
collaborations and everything and it what is the capability it will provide you capability to run your test cases across browsers across platforms so whatever any application that is a, a web application you can automate it and you can run it on different machines you can run it on different platforms the operating system it also need, uh, doesn't uh, you don't need to care till the point of time JVM is present that is a Java virtual machine can run on particular plat on a particular platform you can execute your selenium test scripts on that platform any web browser that is able to understand JavaScript is fit to run an automation script written in selenium so this is the beauty of selenium so what are the features of selenium support for different programming languages so you can see you have Java you have Python you have PHP Ruby Perl JavaScript so any out, any one out of this you can select and you can start coding with any one of these so support for different operating systems so selenium it supports windows mac linux ios android so you can see most of the uh, operating systems they are already being supported by selenium support for different browsers that is you can run your tests uh, case on Internet Explorer you can run it on Firefox Chrome Safari Opera so it is giving you a wide range into which you can run your automation scripts as far as platforms as well as browsers are concerned okay so who uses selenium as of today all the market giants who are big market giants in IT industry they all are using selenium for example you have Google Mozilla itself ThoughtWorks IBM Salesforce LinkedIn all of them are using uh, selenium for automation so now let us move forward to understand the selenium suite so just would like to ask you guys if you have any questions related to the topics that we have covered till now so uh, Swadeep has a question that is where selenium exists in current market trend is it a career option so where it exists I guess I have already answered your question all the big market giants they are already using selenium the other thing is is it a good career option yes definitely it is a very good career option because most of uh, see first of all it's open source so companies they can get it for free and use it for free for lifetime it, ha it doesn't have any licensing cost associated with it because uh, because of which you know even small uh, small organizations to large giants all of them they would tend to use uh, uh, selenium for their automation so does that answer your question Sadi? okay so uh, we have another question from Piyush how does automation work on mobile devices as you mentioned for Android and iOS so uh, Piyush uh, your Android devices or your iOS, uh, iOS devices they too have browsers into them so you can have drivers for the browsers uh, the different browsers that for iOS it is the Safari browser for uh, your Android you have uh, the Chrome browser and you can have the drivers for these uh, devices and you can run the test cases on the Android devices so understanding selenium suite so what does a selenium suite comprise of first of all you have selenium ID so what is a selenium ID selenium ID it is a record and play uh, plugin which uh, which can be installed on Mozilla Firefox and you can record the actions on your Firefox browser okay they will be recorded in the from, uh, form of uh, a script and then you can replay that script again and again you have then you have a selenium RC so selenium RC it stands for remote control server so what does that uh, it was the second generation of selenium uh, uh, sorry uh, it was the next generation of selenium after uh, the ID into which we had a server uh, which was called as the selenium server and selenium server it used to interact with different browsers through its uh, you know uh, libraries the libraries for different browsers uh, understanding you know different programming languages and it used to take care of execution of your automation test scripts then you had the web driver 
So uh, there was an interpreter between uh, your Selenium script and the browser. That was the Selenium RC. And uh, because of which, you know, it became a bit heavy. It became uh, the execution, it was a bit slower than what people expected. So there was a lighter version of Selenium RC, uh, it's Selenium, and that is called a Selenium web driver. So web drivers, it, uh, web driver, it has uh, capa all the cap almost all the capabilities of Selenium RC, apart from the fact that it cannot execute the test cases across uh, means uh, on uh, different machines at the same time. But yes, uh, it ha as far as browser automation is concerned, it had all the capabilities for Selenium RC, and it also had many added capabilities which would help a person to code easily for some automation script. And then we had a Selenium grid. So grid is nothing but it is a cluster of different machines in, uh, onto which you might have installed different softwares and you want to do a parallel execution of your test script on all the machines at the same time. So this is the concept of Selenium grid. When Selenium RC and Selenium web driver, they are combined together. So it is known as Selenium 2. So that is the current version of Selenium that is being used in market. So it has both the capabilities. It has capability to uh, do cross-platform uh, testing. Uh, that is, it doesn't recognize the boundaries of your machine. It can run your automation script of, uh, on any machine that is registered with it in the network. And it is a light version, a lightweight version, just like the Selenium web driver. So the next thing is Selenium Suite, Selenium IDE. So what exactly is this IDE? So as you can see, it is a Firefox plugin, which records and play, uh, plays back user interactions with the browser. Using Selenium IDE, you can export the programming code in different languages like Java, Ruby, Python, etc. So whatever actions you record on Selenium IDE, you have an option in the file menu that you can directly export it in a target language. If you want the script to be in Java, you can just select Java and you will be able to get the complete uh, script for whatever steps you have recorded. It allows to record and playback tests conveniently that were recorded previously in IDE. So if you have previously recorded the test, you can execute those test cases through IDE and uh, even you can execute the test suites, multiple test cases at the same time. <laughs> Selenium IDE is not the best solution for production testing. There are different limitations of Selenium ID due to which we don't call it to be a best solution for production testing. The next component is Selenium RC. Selenium Remote Control is the test tool that allows you to write web application tests in any programming languages. So you can write the script in any language and it will get executed on your browser with the help of Selenium RC. RC server receives the Selenium commands called Selenies from test program using simple HTTP get post request. So what Selenium will uh, be doing it will uh, Selenium server it will receive the commands uh, from your Selenium in the form of Selenies. So Selenies is the language of communication that is being used uh, in the form of just simple guest, get post requests. So th those are in the form of request to your so uh, uh, Selenium remote control server. So as you can see over here, this uh, Selenium architecture, you have your script, okay? Then you have the machine boundary, which is optional. That is your uh, Selenium remote control server. It can run on the same machine, or it can altogether run on different machine. And the Selenium remote control server, it communicates with your browsers with the help of JavaScript. So what uh, Selenium remote control server, it, you can say it acts as an interpreter. So you can use Java, you can use Ruby, you can use Python, whatever language you want, but still it will be able to translate that command into the proper appropriate JavaScript and pass it on to your browser. So that is the beauty of Selenium RC. The next thing is Selenium web driver. It is a compact object oriented API when compared to Selenium 1.0. So it is basically a compact object oriented API uh, it interacts with the browser directly. As I've already told you, there is no interpreter in between. So your Selenium script, it will direct, as a web driver script, it will directly uh, interact with your application, that is browser. So Selenium web driver overcomes the limitation of Selenium 1, like file upload or download, pop-ups and dialog barrier. So with Selenium 1, there were few issues, like uh, you cannot uh, deal with the files that is upload download was not possible. You could not uh, handle pop-ups and dialog barriers. 
So all these problems, they were resolved with Selenium Web Driver. Now coming to the Selenium Grid. So what is Selenium Grid? It runs multiple tests at the same time against different machines running different browsers and operating system. So uh, whenever you have an application, you always would like to test it for the compatibility with different uh, you know, versions of the browsers, different machines, different platforms. So Selenium Grid, it will help you to do a parallel execution, saving a lot of time. Whenever you do parallel execution, you'll be saving much uh, a good amount of time. So that is the beauty of Selenium grid. So as you can see here node 1 it has Internet Explorer on Windows, node 2 is an Android device so it will be having a Chrome browser with a particular version, node 3 it's Safari on Mac and node 4 is Firefox in Ubuntu. So all these different machines they can run the same script running from Selenium, uh, our Selenium server through the Selenium grid. Okay, so now that we know what Selenium is, what are the capabilities of Selenium and what are the limitations of you know different versions of Selenium and how they have been resolved. So now we can go forward for designing the Selenium test framework. Okay, so just would like to know from you guys if you have any questions. So let me go through and see. So we have a question from Sanjog that is, is there any way I can customize ID scripts like adding conditional statements or looping? So uh, Sanjog, that is also one of the limitations of uh, using ID. You cannot customize it as per your requirements. So that is the reason Selenium uh, RC and Selenium WebDriver, they came into place. Okay, so moving forward, first of all, I'd like to, uh, you know, throw light upon the concept of what framework is. So framework, it is nothing but it is just like a building block. Okay, if you are, uh, tr uh, if you imagine a building, okay, how it is built? First, the uh, structure is built, then the pillars are built, then uh, there is uh, a fl uh, floor, then you enclose the walls and everything. So the framework is something that is supporting the building from the core. Okay, so this is what the purpose of framework, it, uh, framework is. Framework will always be there to support all the activities that you want to do with your test scripts. So to just to show you an overview of how a framework can look, okay, when it is uh, developed full-fledged, so uh, we will start from the basic unit of the framework. So first of all, the script function calls. So you have a driver script. Okay, so what is the driver script? This is, uh, this is the master script in any framework, which will uh, tell which test cases are to be executed, uh, on which machines they are to be executed, which browsers they need to be executed. So all this information, it is stored within the driver script or the master script. So your execution, it starts from the driver script. Then the driver script, it takes help of your automation script. So it has different function calls into it. And when these functions get called, your scripts they get invoked as per the requirement. Your methods, they get executed, they will uh, they will set up the environment for you, they will open up the browser and all these things, they will log in. So all these things you can do using the driver script. Then you have the automation script. So whatever particular functionality or the business flow you want to automate, that will be in the form of a script. So what is a script? It is just end-to-end -end business scenario that you would have executed manually. So you just put it into programming language. So uh, this automation script, you can have multiple automation script within uh, you know, the same uh, driver script and the driver knows which automation script to, is to be executed at what uh, you know, particular uh, point of time, uh, whether it is dependent on any other test cases, what is the execution flow. So all this information, it is within the driver script, then you have your automation script. So automation script, it might take help of a repository, like you might have written some common functions uh, which you are using again and again within uh, the process of automation. So you might split out the common functions and use them. 
then you have the object repository so whatever objects they are displayed uh, what anything on the screen for the uh, on the browser screen with respect to your application is an is an object so if there is a text box on the screen it is an object for selenium script if there is a submit button the button is an object if there is a checkbox checkbox is an object radio button again an object so everything is object so you can store the properties of the object for uh, you know using them again and again within different scripts so uh, you you uh, you don't need to worry as to if the object changes some uh, some day or the other you ha don't have to mod if you have and you have used it 25 times within your script you don't have to go to 25 places and modify it you can just modify it within the object repository and go ahead okay so the next thing is the database layer. So uh, basically, uh, this database layer, it means that whatever data is required for your scripts, you will be providing it through this database layer. The data can be anything, like the URL of the application to be invoked, the credentials, that is the username, the password, the navigation within the application, then it can be data-driven test. You might require n number of users to log into your application, you want to test whatever uh, menus they are available for the different uh, users. So all these things, they fall under this category. That is, any kind of data that is being required will come from uh, through your database layer. So data uh, basically uh, uh, might be contained in the, uh, your Excel sheets, the CSV files. It can be uh, a text file. It can be an XML. So it can be into multiple formats. So whatever is suitable for you, you can use it. The next thing is the framework logical layer. So all these things, they, you know, uh, you hide it under a logical layer so that uh, your scripts they are easily maintainable. They can be, you know, changed at the uh, whenever you want. Uh, you can set your own execution flow. You can decide which test scripts to be executed, which test scripts are not to be executed. So all these things they form a logical layer. Then you have your automation tool. So there are different automation tools in uh, into market. So you can use any of the automation tool, but the framework it basically can, uh, will look similar to this only. And then you have a test management tool on top of it. So your automation uh, automation tool it will provide you a facility for reports. So you also have a reporter layer into which uh, you know you generate different kinds of reports for your test execution if you have executed a particular test then you have n number of uh, reports n number of types of reports that you can generate for example it can be just a plain test report as to which test case has been executed has it passed has it failed a record of that there can be error logs if there are any errors occurring during the execution you can keep a log of all those errors then you have the defect report. So uh, whenever the test cases, test suites, they are executed, if there are any defects that are being reported, you keep it under the defect reports and exception email notification. So if there is a deviation from the expected behavior, so there can be, uh, you can set a email notification to the uh, invoker of the script or there can be a group of people who might uh, need to be informed in case of there is any uh, exception. So what can be the exception? Exception can be anything like if the server application server is down, you are trying to invoke the URL but nothing is happening, you are getting uh, uh, any kind of error, that is you are getting a bad response from the server, that means it's not normal, it is not able to execute the script, it is not able to find the next object on the script, uh, on the screen and that is the reason the execution of the script, it has halted and there is an exception that needs to be reported to a particular group of people. So this is basically how automation framework will logically look like. Okay, so let us come back to the Selenium test framework. So while testing a web application using Selenium, it's very important to design a flexible test framework that can easily be modified and reused. The basic concept of using a framework is the modifications, that is maintenance of the framework, it should be very easy. If I have uh, a particular object that is being used at 10 different places in my script, okay, 
and I have someday I realize that oh this object has changed now what should I do I'll first have to think of the 10 places where I use the object and then I'll have to go to all the 10 places and modify the object which is not a very feasible option so I need to find out an easy way that I can keep the object at one place and I can use it at different places so that will serve the purpose that if ever tomorrow the object changes I can just modify the object at one place and reuse it at all the other places. Selenium offers flexibility to create different types of test frameworks that can be reused. Yeah, so one more point that we should discuss is reusability. So test framework it is going to give you a lot of reusability to your code. You can use the same code again and again, again and again. Uh, for example, uh, the very common example of this kind of uh, reusability is your login code. For running any of the business flows on your application, you definitely need to log into the application. So this login, it can be a reusable method in your framework, which you can invoke from any of the scripts that you are running. So once you, you just need to give a call to the uh, login method and it will first execute the login method which is written just at one place and reused at several places. So if you see down you have a keyword driven framework so this framework runs on list of keywords so what are keywords? Keywords are uh, you know user defined action words which will have a meaning so if the user is defining the action, key, action words he also needs to define the action that word is going to take so actually it's kind of uh, you know one word for a group of words for, or for a group of actions selenium actions so if i say uh, i want to enter some text into a particular area of the screen i uh, i can do it very easily by saying enter text okay and i will have to define it somewhere what does that enter text mean so i'll be showing you uh, uh, a framework that is keyword driven as well as uh, data driven so you can have uh, more understanding about the frameworks the second part is the data driven framework so recursively test application using large data pool so if you have any kind of application which needs to take a huge set of data on the same uh, set of uh, application and just retest so you can use a data driven framework you'll have data at your back end you can which you can modify easily and you'll be using the same test script to with different data set to certify your application okay and when all both these approaches that is the keyword driven approach and the data driven approach it is combined together it is known as a hybrid framework okay so this is how the definition of uh, the keyword driven the data driven and the hybrid uh, framework it is form so uh, are you guys good on uh, the theory part as to what the frameworks are okay so we have few questions over here one is uh, from Sanjog that is what functional uh, functionality difference is there between test management tool and an automation tool so uh, Sanjog I would like to uh, enlighten you that uh, both these things they are totally different because the test management tool it is uh, going to take care of your test runs how many times the test case has been run what is the outcome of the test and everything whereas your automation tool will take care of actually performing those actions which are written in your test scripts so there is a huge difference between these two things okay so uh, does that answer your question so another question is that uh, this is from Swadeep that is selenium RC and web driver still use in companies so yes uh, so the, both these technologies are still used in companies but uh, as of now uh, we have a better version which is known as Selenium standalone server and then you have your Selenium uh, uh, web driver so web driver uh, you have to download the jars specific to your programming language and you can use them and we also have one more question from Rudradeep he says can uh, can you tell me what is better, HTML unit driver or PhantomJS? 
So it completely depends on uh, your use or what you are trying to automate. Uh, because uh, you know you cannot define the need by uh, just seeing whether this one is better or that one is better. It is the use that will define which one is better at particular point of time. Okay, so by this time we have understood that there are three types of framework. One is the keyword driven, one is the data driven and when you combine both these frameworks you have a hybrid framework. So now let us go into the details of each type of framework. Okay, so how does the framework work? First of all, so uh, as far as Selenium, concern, uh, Selenium is concerned you have your test cases. Okay, so the test cases if you are implementing the data driven approach your data uh, you would like to store them in excel files because it is very easy to maintain the excel files you can just uh, you know change the data in the excel file and on the fly it will get updated while the next execution cycle is being performed so that is uh, that is the advantage of using the excel sheets so if selenium has to uh, communicate with excel sheets it will require another framework or libraries you can say which is known as the Apache PUI. So Apache PUI it gives Selenium capability to interact with the Excel. The capability like reading the data from the Excel, writing back data to the Excel, anything of this sort. So it uh, you can uh, get the cell values from uh, your Excel sheets using the Apache uh, PUI framework and it can pass those values to Selenium web, web driver. So for web driver, it is a value that is coming from backend, uh, but ultimately it's a value. Then the third component is your test result report logs. Oh, sorry, <laughs> the test results, the reports, and the logs. So what are the test results? Test results are nothing but uh, anything uh, like your test case. Has it passed? Has it failed? Is there any uh, anything uh, that you didn't want to happen and has happened? So all these things will be captured. So test result will just tell you whether the test case it has uh, passed or failed, or uh, and if it has failed, at what point of time it has failed. Then you have the reports. So reports they are generated over multiple execution cycles uh, with respect to your test scripts. How many test scripts you have run? What is the average time that is taken to run the scripts? Then uh, which are the test? Uh, what is the you know uh, percentage of uh, success of a test script, what is the percentage of failure of a particular test script or the test scenario. So all these things they are kept under the reports and then you have your logs. So logs are nothing but uh, they capture any uh, events that uh, are important or that are not uh, as per your expectations. So uh, there are different types of logs like uh, you have the information logs, you have the error logs, you have the warnings. So all these things they are kept under your log, uh, logs in a log file. So log file can uh, be also anything that the user defines. Okay. So the next thing is keyword driven framework. So by reading keyword, keyword driven framework, what do you understand? If I was the one, I would have thought of something that there is a keyword that means there's one word which is capable of performing some set of actions, I may say. And yes, that is the that is correct ultimately because it is able to perform actions with the help of different keywords. And these are user defined. So each keyword in a keyword driven framework has specific meaning like weight wait for some specific time. If I declare, uh, if I, uh, you know, write down uh, in my script, wait somewhere. So wait will have a definition that I have to wait for some specific amount of time. Verify. If I use the keyword verify, this should do validation of text or validation of objects, validation of value or any kind of validation that the user defines. Then you have the store. So this would ultimately uh, direct your uh, script to store a particular value from your application into your uh, any form of data. Uh, that is, you can write it back to an Excel file, to an XML file, whatever it is. Okay, then scroll down. Scroll down would simply tell that the user uh, action that needs to perform is scrolling down on the screen. And then you have different actions like click, enter text, select. So all these will have a particular definition and the user himself will have to 
write that definition so that it is like it is my own dictionary as far as the keyword driven framework is concerned it is my own dictionary if for a keyword called weight I say I want to uh, you know use a click operation by saying weight so that is also possible but as per uh, the practice we write logically correct words for logically correct actions that is if I say weight I will be writing uh, in code for a particular uh, weight period that is the script should halt at a uh, that weight statement for a particular amount of time so this is how it is completely user defined now if I give you another example I say weight okay for me I define a weight of 100 milliseconds okay but somebody he uh, somebody else he wants a weight to be of 1000 milliseconds so the definition is weight but how much amount of time is it should wait the script should wait depends upon the user again so user is going to define how much amount of time is the script is going to halt so these are the keywords and the implementation of the keywords is also something that we need to write so how does the keyword driven framework work you have your test cases as you can see on the left hand side these are your test cases which uh, you know uh, has the use uh, they use your action keywords and the keywords they are written in your Excel files then you have the Apache PUI framework which will help your selenium web driver to understand anything with respect to Excel file so uh, as I said you that understanding that it needs to get uh, uh, get data from a particular row and a particular column for example I want to get data which is written in third row and fifth column so I'll direct my Apache PUI framework to get me data from third column and fifth row uh, fifth row and third column and Apache PUI framework will uh, bring that value for me and give it to selenium web driver and then over here you have the same approach that is your test results your reports and logs and now as you can see you have your keyword driven framework so where does keyword driven framework come into picture you have your test cases okay the test cases they will have the keywords so to understand those keywords it will go to the Excel uh, it will go to the keyword driven framework tell me what is the meaning of this particular uh, statement uh, or a particular keyword so when the keyword uh, driven framework it will uh, it will try to find that where is the implementation of this keyword so it will go to the implementation of that particular keyword and will fetch out the results okay so you will have a better understanding of what the keyword driven framework is from this example so as you can see I have an Excel file into which I'm uh, you know writing certain keywords and then those keywords they do have an action associated with them and that has been written in the Java file so first of all you can see the object name so and as I already told you that anything on the screen it is an object so the object uh, we are giving a name to the object particular object then we have the value column into which if there is any value that needs to be passed to the object you can just write, type in the value and it will uh, you can pass it to the uh, object then you have the action so this is the my column of interest that is action keyword this is my keyword and I am the person who can define this enter text I'm the person who can define this click and all then I have the property type so the objects they have different properties I'll be using a particular property that can uniquely identify an object for me on screen so for instance I'm using the name property uh, for the first uh, that is username object I'm using the ID property for the password object and I'm again using the name property for the login object okay and then the property value so whatever is uh, there are certain tools that are used to get the uh, values of the properties like firebug so firebug is a very well-known tool which will help you to get the properties of the object on screen so if I want to get the value for this name property of a particular object okay so I can uh, inspect an element in firebug and get the values of the name property for us the value of the name property is lock then you have the ID for this uh, uh, sorry then you have the object name as password okay the value that I'm passing to this object is demo one two three the action I'm performing is enter text and 
the property type is ID. So now whatever value I can find under the ID column, I can get that value over in the property value column that is user underscore pass. So this is how this object password will be identified on the screen. And then I have the login button. So that is the reason there's no value that I need to pass to the login button and I perform the click operation. Okay, and this is the property type and property value for this login button. So this is how pretty much the uh, your Selenium, it is going to read this Excel file and understand the things from the Excel file. So the test case, uh, Test case to test framework will not change only data in Excel will change the corresponding action also The object name it gives a picture. What is there in the test step? Value if any value has to be entered then it has to be passed or else blank Action what action is to be performed property type which identifier is used to find the object as I already told you that the object uh, They have certain properties and these are known as uh, these are the identifiers so whichever identifier you are using that will be written into this column. Then you have the value for the property that is identifier value and then you have status. If the action performs successfully then pass or else fail. So you can invoke different reporters if the action you know it has been completed properly you can pass on uh, pass in the status column or else you can pass on fail. So both the things they are possible. Okay, so now I'll be showing you a quick demo of the keyword driven framework, but before that I would like to know from you guys if you have any questions. So there are a few that I can see. From where do I get the property type? So I've, uh, I guess I've already answered this question. You need to use uh, third party tools or the developer uh, tools available with each browsers to get the properties of objects. Okay. And uh, Manish says, is it similar to uh, calling user defined functions? Yes, definitely. This is something that uh, you have a keyword and you implement a method behind that keyword and hence it becomes a user driven action. Okay, so let us quickly go through one of the projects that I have for your keyword driven approach. So as you can see, I have this, uh, sorry, not this one this one. So as you can see, this is my keyword driven framework and how have I arranged the things. So I'm giving you a very simple example in terms of uh, the keyword driven or the data driven framework uh, for the reason that, you know, uh, there are n number of things that you can add on to this, but understand until the basics are clear, you won't be able to go on to the advanced level. So if you see, I have four different packages. One is the config package, which is storing my configuration. One, I, one is the data engine, into which I'm storing the data that I'll be requiring during the test. One is the execution engine. This execution engine will take care of executing my test scripts. And one is the utility. So utility has the Excel utils, that is how to communicate with the Excel file. Okay, so here the Apache UI framework comes into picture. So first of all, we will see the data uh, data engine.xls file. Okay, so as you can see, I have uh, I have a test case for which I have nine test steps. If you can see the test uh, test case is login. Okay, and I have nine steps for this test case to be complete. The uh, the test step it is known as TS01, 02, and so on. And I'm writing a description that for TS01, what I want to do is open the browser. For 02, I want to navigate to website. For 03, click on my account button. 04, enter username. And then comes my action keyword. So this is the main thing that we are looking out for in the keyword driven framework. So this action keyword, it has to be defined somewhere to perform a particular action. So where does it go? If you go to the action keywords.java file over here, I have defined each and every action that I'm trying to perform. If you uh, see the open browser, first we'll go through open browser. So over here, I have implemented the open browsers method. So it says system.set property. This one is for setting it to Chrome driver. And I mean, uh, I'm creating an instance of my web driver class known as Chrome driver. Now, sorry, known as driver. And it is for Chrome driver. So this is my open browser. So if I uh, execute this particular 
uh, method, it should be able to just open my browser by setting, uh, and the browser open should be a Chrome browser. Okay, then let us see what the next thing is. The next thing is navigate. Let us see what we have we implemented. So for navigate, we have implemented that it should go to a website known as www.store.demoqa.com. Okay, and then I'm asking the thread to sleep for some time so that the page gets loaded completely. The third action keyword is click my account. So let us see what we have coded over here. So I'm trying to find an element with some particular XPath. So this is uh, the XPath of the element which would uh, say my account on screen and I'm performing the click operation onto that. The next thing is inputting the username, then inputting the password. So there is a send keys method that is used to send text to the text boxes on screen. And then again, I'm clicking the login button. So this is pretty much about my uh, test scenario. So just to show you guys uh, how it works, I don't want the browser to quit because I want to show you guys uh, how it exactly it looks like. One more file. Uh, which is of importance is Excel Util. So we have this data engine.xls file and the, uh, all the data related to your test uh, cases, test steps it is, and your action keywords, it is written into that file. So I need to first understand, uh, I need to first, you know, connect to that file, then only then I'll be able to read the data from that file. So how do I do it? I do it using the Apache PUI framework. If you can see, I have imported for a certain utilities which uh, are related to XSSF cell, then related to the sheet and workbook. So first of all, you set an opt, uh, you create an object for your Excel sheet, your Excel workbook, and then for a cell. So uh, as a part of uh, setting the file input stream, you create a new object of Excel file, okay, and then uh, you pass on the workbook uh, that you want to work with and the worksheet. So what is a workbook and what is a worksheet? So data engine .xls is my workbook and test steps is my worksheet. So all these things you need to pass on uh, to the Apache POI framework to get the data from the Excel file. Okay. And then, sorry, yeah. And then how can I read the data from the Excel file? So it is over here that how I can read the data from the Excel file. I, uh, I'm just trying to, you know, uh, I'm getting two parameters from the uh, calling function, that is the row number and the column number. So within Excel, anything is stored within a row and a column. So if you can see, this is uh, column three and row number five. So this is the third column of this Excel, and this is the fifth row. So enter username, uh, this action keyword, input username, I would find it in row number four and column number five. So this is how you locate, uh, how the Apache POI framework is also going to get the data from this cell. Okay, so the next thing is cell, uh, you are uh, you are just, uh, you know, getting the data uh, into an object of uh, the type cell. Uh, whatever worksheet is uh, there, that is the current worksheet you have set in into this uh, method and you are passing the row number and the column number. So once Apache Prior Framework processes this row number and column number, whatever data is there, it will bring it in the form of string. If you can see over here, I'm the string, and then I'm returning the uh, string to the calling function. So this is how it works. So let us have a quick demo. I'll show you how the frameworks they so now what we expect uh, the framework to do is read the data from the Excel and perform the actions in this particular fashion. So first of all, I want uh, my script to enter the uh, open the browser. I want it to navigate to a particular URL, click on my accounts, then input the username, input the password, click on login, then wait for some time, click on logout and close the browser. For the timing, I have commented this uh, code for close uh, browser. Why? Because uh, the automation is very fast. You guys uh, might not uh, able to identify what things are happening and even whether the browser has open or not, browser has closed. So that's the reason I have just commented out. Uh, we will run this. So for running this, we'll have to go to the execution engine driver script. <clears throat> Say run as, and I'll run this application. So let us see if it is able to log into the account and then log out. 
So this is my Chrome browser because I have invoked the Chrome browser and is navigating to a URL known as store.demoqa.com. Okay, over here there is my accounts. So I expect it to click on my account and then the next page uh, which is showing uh, having actual text box for the username and password should be displayed. Encryption and username and put in them. So I think there is some with the connectivity to this page. It's loading. Let us see. Yes. So here is put in test user three. It has put in the password and it has clicked on login button. Okay. As soon as it will load, the next step is to load. So uh, it's off. Uh, there is a once you log in, the login button section it will change to log out. So we will be log out button and logging out of the application. The demo QA site seems to be very slow today. I'm not sure if it will give a timeout exception. I'll just check. If not, we'll re-execute the script. But as you can see, that whatever data is there, I have uh, uh, the key action keywords. They were into my uh, Excel file, my Selenium script. The, it has brought those uh, action uh, keywords and found its implementation and executed those. Okay, so this is because the site was very slow that we have an exception. So the exception is timeout exception because command timeout exception because it waited for a long uh, period of time to uh, for the application browser to complete the action but it could not because of the slowness. Okay. Let's see to execute it one more time but our um, basic motto uh, of uh, uh, showing how the action keywords uh, work is uh, already served. So by that time the a script is executing I'll take a few questions so uh, there are a few questions like uh, from Satyadev it's uh, what is the execution engine package so inside that package I have actually written my driver script uh, if you remember the uh, framework diagram I had uh, shown you that there is a driver script which will act as the master script to run all other scripts in your uh, framework so that is uh, uh, execution engine where I have my master script. Okay, then uh, we have where function name is a keyword. Uh, I didn't get you. Uh, it's from Manish. Just a moment, Manish. Uh, Okay, so we have one more uh, question that is from Manu. Uh, it's uh, companies want experienced person in Selenium. So what should we do for better, a better career? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Manu, you can always uh, be a part of uh, you know a team uh, into your current organization. Also, you can uh, practice for yourself. You can uh, write your own automation scripts onto whatever open uh, applications are there in the market. So you uh, you can practice a lot and uh, this. Uh, uh, any kind of scripting, uh, you know, you uh, can do it better only with uh, hands-on. So you should do a lot of ha uh, hands-on as far as uh, any of the technologies, scripting languages and uh, tools they are concerned. So one more question from Satyadev. Can I test uh, dynamic nature of website using Selenium? Like my page has a field as price where price can change in future. So what is the best way to test this scenario using Selenium? So yes, uh, Satyadev, definitely. Selenium will support uh, you in case of dynamic objects also. Even if you are uh, doing something like uh, you have a search grid, uh, you want to enter a particular text in the search uh, box and uh, there might be just two results for the first time. And uh, later on when data accumulates after 5-10 days, you might have hundreds of results. So in such scenarios also, you can use proper locators to locate, uh, locate the uh, object on the screen that you want and you can automate the scenario also. Okay, so uh, Sanjo has a question that is, uh, can I choose Selenium or QTP for a better career? Uh, so, uh, see uh, Sanjo, uh, I, maybe I'm not the right person to answer this, answer this question. I have uh, done my, uh, most of the part of my career into Selenium, 
and I'm very happy with uh, whatever I'm get to, uh, whatever I get to learn each and every day uh, as far as the open source technology Selenium is concerned. I've also worked on QTP. Uh, it's a paid tool, so uh, there are companies who can uh, afford it. There are companies who cannot afford it. It completely depends. So, but uh, it's like uh, uh, I would still say that I'm not the best person to answer this question. Okay. So the next thing is uh, that nowadays I see companies are asking Selenium with Cucumber framework. Can you please tell us what Cucumber is? Uh, I would definitely love to answer this question, uh, Anwar, but uh, we are short of time. So let us see if we have uh, time left with us. I'll definitely go to this question. So there is another part uh, that is remaining that is related to your data-driven framework. So first of all, uh, I would like to uh, tell you guys that uh, data driven frameworks uh, they are like whenever you want to test the same set uh, same application with different data sets you will be using your data driven approach so um, you can maintain the data into your excel files and which is uh, which can be modified very easily for a simple example there are applications in the market which have different types of user like there is a normal user, there is a client user, there is an admin user, there is a super admin user, then uh, there is an administrator to the site. So all these are the different types of user for just one particular application. So uh, you might have to execute the same set of uh, operations. That is, you want to just test in that all these users, they are able to log in and get the proper landing page. So always your login action, it will be common. You will be using the same objects on the screen, but you want it want to use your uh, use it with different data. So this is where your data driven framework it will help you. Okay, just give a minute, guys. Okay, thanks for being patient. So executing test cases with different sets of data that is uh, the if that is the purpose, data driven frameworks are the best and that can help you a lot. Data-driven framework is very helpful where we want to test the application with different sets of data and doing it manually is a difficult and error-prone task. So uh, repeatability is uh, you know, something that humans easily get bored and uh, get tired, they have fatigue, they don't want to do the same set of actions again and again. Repetition is a pain for any one of us. So that, uh, and uh, repeating the same test with different data, there is no logic. Automation is the best solution for that. Okay, so now uh, let us see uh, how the data driven framework uh, it works. So you have your test cases, okay. Uh, in such frameworks, the number of test cases is very less, but there's a huge amount of data. You want to execute the cycle with different data that are available with you. Okay, the rest of the structure, it is practically same. That is, you have your Apache PUI framework, then you have your Selenium web driver, and you have your testing, uh, your reporting framework or next to the Selenium web driver. Okay, and your data driven framework, it is going to provide you data each for each and every cycle of execution. So now, uh, if you see, uh, this is the example that we have previously used. Uh, that is, we have the object name, we have the action, we have the property type, property value, and the status that we are keeping. Apart from the fact that in the values column, if you observe, I'm passing a variable known as username and a variable known as password, for which I'm writing different sets of data in altogether different sheet that is known as data set. This is data driven and this is data set. So into the data set, I have uh, three users, that is basically admin1, admin2, and admin3. So likewise, you can have n number of users that you uh, want to use with, uh, test with. So you can maintain a set of users in your data set and your, uh, your data-driven uh, framework that will take uh, you know, uh, care that it executes the test case as many number of times as, uh, as there are, there is data in the data set. So for instance, if uh, this is the test case and this is the data that, that I have, it will execute these three steps, that is username, password, and login for these three uh, data sets. That is, these test, these test cases, they will be executed three times. Why? Because I have three values in my data set. So this is how the data-driven framework it works. 
in a second column of data driven tab values are in curly braces so anything in curly braces will be treated as a variable and the script will apache pui framework it will understand that this is a variable whose value is written somewhere so you need to provide where that value is written and it will automatically pick up the values from there which tells the tool that the field, field is dynamic and it value has to be fetched from a data set tab. So total number of executions is number of rows in data set. So if I had five rows in this data set, the script would have executed five times. Okay, so I'll quickly show you how the data driven framework works. Okay, so I have my data driven framework over here into which you know I have uh, just written two things one is the Excel utils that was required to communicate with the Excel file I have my driver script and I have my data engine uh, so within my data engine I have my this uh, XLS file which I have stored onto my local uh, this thing okay so this is what my data file looks like It's loading just a moment. Okay. Just a second. There is some problem with that. Okay, so as you can see, I have my data set and it's very simple. I have a name of the user, I have the email ID of the user, I have his phone number, okay, and uh, there is a particular field on my uh, application which is asking me for something called as program. So I've just written uh, over here that uh, I have just kept the data. So if you see, there are 24, uh, there are 25. Uh, lines out of which one is uh, your this thing uh, one is your uh, heading for the column so that won't be counted so there are 24 uh, data sets that are available with me and I want my script to execute over each cycle over here so if you can see the Excel utils it is the same and inside the driver script I have written the code to get fetch the data from the Excel Excel file and put it on the screen and submit the data. So this is just a site uh, for lovely professional university wherein I'm, uh, you know, accessing their contact us form and I'm trying to fill up the form with different sets of data. So we'll just see how the script works. So this is the uh, site for LPU, it's loading. This is something called as a console, that, uh, which will give me idea about what uh, execution is going on and how it is proceeding. I guess it will time out again. Let us see. Okay, let us just read on the code. So this, uh, if there, you know, uh, if uh, there is any kind of delay from uh, in server response of the application. Uh, you have a certain time limit for which the Selenium script will wait and after that it will fail. Why? Because the remote server is not responding an application is not uh, performing the desired actions because it is not keeping in sync with the Selenium script. So we'll allow the script to run. Okay. So one more thing that uh, I just wanted to show you is uh, you know this uh, keyword driven and uh, data driven framework all together so uh, if you can see on my screen I have uh, 
a keyword and data uh, project into which I have written a package for my, uh, you know, actions, whatever action are there. So these, uh, all the Java classes, they contain particular actions related to uh, some of the keywords that are there in my framework. Then I have my test file into which I uh, am testing my Excel file, whether it is running prop, whether it, uh, the connection is successful, whether the cells, they have data and everything. And then I have my test execution file. But to show you a wonderful thing, the most wonderful thing is it's Excel. Uh, Excel. Okay, so if you see over here, uh, everything, even my test case is from my Excel file. Uh, my data is from my Excel file, my keywords, those are maintained over here and implemented in my Java file. So the first thing is, the first tab says configuration into which I have provided the URL, I have provided the browser onto which I want to run and I have provided where my test case is written. So the URL is facebook.com, the browser I want to implement this, uh, run this test case is Chrome and this is uh, the test case is written in the sheet called as master. So over here I say uh, execute Facebook data set. So over here the Facebook is, uh, uh, this uh, Facebook sheet is present over here into which my complete test case is written. What are the actions that I want to perform? What kind of verifications are there? So if you go for verify object, you know, this is a keyword. So what it will do is it will try to uh, validate if the particular object, it exists on the screen. I have a capture screenshot step, so it will capture the screenshot at this point of time. Then uh, I have different input met, uh, inputs and I have different clicks that are completely written into this. So, and this is my data set, wherein I'm maintaining different uh, datas. So this is the script that was running into background. And I guess it must, Okay. So it will keep running in background. We don't need to worry. I'll just uh, walk you through the Excel sheet. Okay. So uh, inside the data, see, uh, data set, I have different users that I'll be using for this particular test trip. And in the feed tab, I have wherever I'm using this user and password, it will go to the data set and the test case four times. Why? Because I have four data, uh, uh, four sets of data in my uh, Excel file. Okay. So yes, we have actually run a wrong project. Uh, we were to run the data driven frame. Okay, so let us see if a lovely professional university site is up and running, we'll be able to get through it. So by that time the script is running, I would like to take questions from you guys if there are any. So uh, Anoop has a question that which uh, apart from open source, what are the, uh, what of what other benefits of Selenium? So, uh, Andrew, as I've already explained you that, uh, you know, it's very flexible. You can integrate different frameworks uh, along with Selenium to get your work done. You can, uh, you know, get, uh, use different tools in combination with Selenium, like uh, the most popular uh, combination, like you can use a tool known as Sikuli. So, Sikuli is an image recognition tool, which can, uh, you know, recognize the images on Windows as well as, uh, on web, uh, sorry, web browsers as well as Windows. So that is something uh, which will add up a capability to your Selenium script that whenever you are uploading the file and your uh, file browser opens up, you can select it based on the image and you don't need to worry how it goes. Okay, then uh, we have a question from Krishna that is, which framework is best, data driven or keyword driven? So Krishna, most of the times it will be, uh, it is particularly a matter of need. What kind of need you have uh, for your uh, framework? And depending upon that only, 
uh, you can decide which framework to use. If you are particularly dealing with data, you can use a data driven framework. If you're particularly dealing with uh, the keywords or you want to write the test cases into your Excel sheet, you can use the keyword. But uh, as far as my experience is concerned, most of the time it is the hybrid framework that is being used. So does that answer your question, Krishna? Okay. So we have another question from Anoop. Apart from open source, what are the benefits of you know, how we decide which framework we have to use? So benefits, Anoop, I have already told you. Uh, and which framework to use, that completely depends on the need of your project. But uh, the, uh, most of the time, 70% of the time, it will be the hybrid framework that is used because uh, you will uh, require both data as well as keywords for your operations. Okay, so guys, uh, after this webinar, when you go to, uh, uh, you know, your menu options, and that is file, from file, go to uh, exit, leave webinar, so you'll be automatically redirected to a feedback uh, survey. So I request you guys to just uh, go through the feedback survey and give your suggestions, your complaints or compliments, whatever it is. Okay, and for any kind of uh, information with regards to automation frameworks, you can get in touch with Edureka. We do have different courses that are being conducted and uh, we have uh, much more things. We uh, have projects that uh, are there for the students and everything. So anything uh, from your side that is uh, questions, feedbacks, they are always welcome. Okay, so with this, we come to the end of the webinar. I thank you all for being patient and, you know, bearing me through the webinar. <laughs> okay, so we have one more question. Uh, that's, I guess, the last one we can take up. And it's from Manu. When will be the next... Uh, so... Ganesh has a question that uh, when will be the next webinar conducted? So uh, Ganesh, uh, you can always uh, visit uh, the edureka.co site. Uh, over there we publish whatever uh, new new uh, webinars that uh, we undertake each week, but they are mostly on Wednesdays. So you can go through the site and uh, you, know, you, uh, you can register yourself for getting updates on the webinars also. Okay, so I guess, uh, uh, we had a good time uh, today uh, doing this webinar. Uh, I really enjoyed uh, the audience and the questions from you guys. And uh, you guys were amazing audience. So I thank you all and uh, we wind up with this. So thanks a lot, everyone. Have a great day.